not fishermen, but farmers of the sea are the men who cultivate the temperamental oyster, king of the shellfish. The octopus, as it's called, is the latest and most economical method of sowing the baby oysters at the right depth and the right width apart. Before, planting was a lengthy and expensive business that contributed to the high cost of oysters. Here at Butley Creek in Suffolk, they predict that through much greater efficiency, they can bring down the price from about 25 shillings a dozen to six shillings. The Butley Oysterage has imported a million young Portuguese oysters, which it plans to harvest within five years. Harvesting is another process which has changed here recently. Now a sledge is used to eliminate the risk of burying the oysters as the men wade through the soft foreshore. It also means that the new crop can be sown immediately after harvesting. As it was, the beds were so pitted with holes that they had to lie fallow for a year. The sledge is simple in operation, a line attached to an anchor embedded in the mud which pulls it along. The cost of a dozen succulent oysters is a relatively modern problem for the gourmet. At the beginning of the century, they were regarded, along with offal, as being fit only for poor people. As an hors d'oeuvre, they now rank almost as high as caviar. The artificial growing of oysters is another of those tricks the Romans taught us. But what the Romans didn't do was to import oysters from warm waters to stop them breeding in the comparative cold of our coastal creeks. From Roman times until yesterday, oysters were a winter delight. Now they can be enjoyed throughout the year. Once collected, the oysters are rinsed before being examined. Getting them ready for market is comparatively easy. In the words of the song, they're picking all the big ones out. 